Great news, the Ryzen 5600X is finally in stock at MSRP, and at that price, it's the best gaming CPU. But what else do you need to make the best gaming system? What motherboard do you need? X570, B550, B450? For the memory, what's the right speed and latency to get for gaming? How much cooling do you need? Don't worry, we're gonna go through all of these questions and get you the answers that you need to build the best Ryzen 5600X gaming build 2021 edition, coming up right now. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Today, I'm really excited. We're gonna go through a Ryzen 5600X gaming build, but not just pick out the parts, we're gonna tell you what the best parts are at every stop for the motherboard, the memory, the storage, and beyond. And we're gonna get you the best gaming build 2021 with a Ryzen 5600X. We can do that because the thing is finally in stock at MSRP, it only took what, by my calculations, two billion years to get there, but now it's there. It, if you go to Amazon, if you go to a lot of other retailers, you can now find it for its $299 MSRP, which is exciting because at that price, it is the best price to performance high-end gaming CPU for pretty much any graphics card whatsoever. We've got this one right here, but we'll talk a little bit about graphics card. I know that's a sore spot for folks right now. Don't worry, I've got some ideas on that too. Of course, that's what this channel's all about. It's about getting you the best price to performance in your gaming PCs. And if that's content you want more of, well, first of all, remember, like the video for the algorithm, right? And of course, subscribe. We're getting in close to 30,000 subscribers as I film this right now. Maybe we'll be over by the time it goes live. And we are gonna have our own line of merch. It's live on the channel right now below the video description. You can go there right now and check it out. It's really cool stuff. Strongly recommend you take a look at it. With that, let's jump into this. Okay, so let's get the most crazy issue out of the way first, which is the graphics card, right? Obviously you wanna get the best graphics card you can, but right now it's just impossible to get graphics cards. So what are you gonna do? In this particular build, I picked up an RTX 3060 Ti. I just got lucky off like a new egg shuffle. Um, you can still check out Newegg Shuffle. I would urge you to get your graphics card first before you buy any other part. Now, maybe you already have a graphics card and you're just looking to upgrade your system, in which case, great, you can skip ahead a little bit. But let me give you some placeholders if you just decided, hey, I wanna buy something just to game now, I'm gonna replace it in a year or two when the graphics card market gets back to quote unquote normal. Here's a couple of things that uh, deals that I'm seeing right now that still aren't that bad. The first one is gonna be the GTX 1063 gigabyte card. Now why the three gigabyte card? Because miners don't want these anymore. Um, they're not profitable for mining. You can get them for about 220 to $250, maybe a little bit more depending on how nice the card is. I would recommend uh, make sure, though, you don't get one of these old mining cards. Most of these were made by Zotac and looks great, right? Oh, it's cheap. Oh, here's why it's cheap, because there's no video output on it. So just double check before you buy anything. Um, if you can't get a 1060, kind of the next uh, tier down for me and, and a little cheaper um, is the 970. This performs, you know, somewhat less than the 1063 gigabyte card. But again, you can get it for 200 or so dollars. The 960 is kind of in the same boat, uh, less performance, but right now at least the market's not as favorable for it, so I'd still stick to the 970. And then of course you can always look at the R9 380. That was gonna perform below any of those cards that I just mentioned. Um, sometimes you can find one on a good sale right now. $225, yeah, I'd go with a 970. So that's what I would pick right now in order to kind of fill the gap if you're looking to fill the gap. And of course, my strong recommendation is get the graphics card first and then worry about the rest of the build. All right, let's talk about the motherboard. Uh, first of all, if you haven't seen my best motherboards video, I'm gonna leave a link to it up there in the card right there. It's 28 minutes of nothing but motherboardness for Ryzen 5000 and the best motherboards. But let me give you the highlights real quick for a 5600X gaming build. Do you need X570? Question number one. Answer number one, absolutely not. And I would avoid most budget X570 motherboards because they're kind of trashed here. The VRMs are trashed here. The features tend to be trashed here. Now there's some high-end X570s that are amazing boards, but they're not gonna give you anything that you need for gaming over a B550 board. Remember, B550 boards give you PCIe 4.0. 
at the graphics card slot and at the first M.2 uh, SSD slot. I don't even think you need that. I think you could certainly get away with uh, a different uh, B450 board and we'll go through some of those in just a second. My recommendation here right now is it's the Gigabyte B550M Aorus Pro. This is the original version. They reissued this as the Pro-P. They upgraded the VRM so it could run some of the higher core count chips like the 5900X and the 5950X. But they also downgraded the audio on that board. So I think at $129, this one is still a steal, still a steal. And it's got BIOS flashback. It's got great USB connectivity. Um, on the back side of it. If you don't need front, front panel USB type C a header for your case, if you get a case that doesn't have that, which uh, you know most cases still don't have USB type C on the front panel, this is a great motherboard. Now, alternatively, as we go up in price, or actually kind of lateral in price, we have the ASUS Tough Gaming B450 Plus 2. This is a great budget motherboard, full-size ATX, if that's what you're looking for. It has, this is an upgraded board. It's the reissue of it. It's got better VRMs. You don't need it for the 5600X, but that's nice to have. It's got an ALC 1200 audio codec on it. It's got really good rear panel uh, USB connectivity for a B450. And overall for $120, it also has BIOS flashback, which the original one didn't. This is really hard to beat. I'm gonna, links down in the description, of course, always. And if you're looking for something that's Wi-Fi enabled and has amazing features in the B450 class without paying an arm and a leg, there is, and I own this board, uh, MSI uh, Gaming Pro Carbon. I never say this board right, uh, even though I own it. Links down in the description, ALC 1220 audio codec on it. It's got really great USB connectivity, really strong Wi-Fi on it. Just overall, it's got BIOS flashback, really, really strong board for only $150. Now, of course, let's say that you do want a higher end B550 board. The one that I'm going to go with, I actually went with the ASUS ROG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi version. It's got amazing audio. It's got some nice RGB on it. It's got really good uh, connectivity on it. And I don't have right now in a system, I don't have an ASUS board. So I wanted to go put together a system with an ASUS board to play around with. So that's why I'm going with this. But... Right now at Newegg, at least, it's on sale for $179 plus $20 off with a promo code. Oh my God, that's like $160 for this board. That's that's a stupid good deal. But any of the boards I listed in that Best Motherboards video would be perfectly good. Just avoid cheap X570s. Let's now talk about the CPU cooler. And again, remember, the Ryzen 5600X, it comes with the included Wraith Stealth box cooler. But let's be honest, that is... It's basically adequate, but I would immediately replace it. You're spending $300 on a CPU, spend 25 or 30 bucks, and let's get a halfway decent uh, cooler. Now, there's a couple ones I, I might recommend here. Actually, it looks like the Hyper 212 Black Edition's on sale right now over at Newegg with the $10 mail-in rebate. That's, that's a pretty good, uh, there's a great CPU cooler right there, and it looks nice as well. Now, you can go two different ways with this. You can either decide to get something super budget, um, which is absolutely fine. You know, you, you can even a Gamex 400 or something like that. Let's just sort these by price. Now I've kind of cheated. I star, uh, I spent a lot of time in PC part picker and I just star stuff that I would uh, buy. That way I can find it really quickly. Uh, the id cooling basics in here. The other way to go is to have even more cooling capacity because Ryzen 5000 is very good while it's under load of using any available cooling headroom. So in our case, we could either go with a, a big air cooler or we could go with a liquid all-in-one cooler. That's what I've decided to do. So I've filtered this out to just liquid AIO coolers that are 240, 280, or 360 millimeter, anything that'll actually fit in that case. And I'm gonna end up going with the id cooling zoom flow 240x ARGB. I'm going to go with the white one. Okay, let's talk about the memory. This is the, probably the most confusing part for anybody. Remember, I did a whole video on best memory for Ryzen 5000. I'll leave it up there in the card. Yeah, it was done a while ago, but all the principles are still the same. I, I looked at a ton of data and here's the, here's the, in a nutshell for somebody building a 5600X gaming build, you want to primarily get DDR4, 3200 CL16 and you'll be fine. For most people who are playing in either 1440p or 4K, or they have a graphics card that may be not as powerful at 1080p. 
for those of you who are going to have super high end graphics cards and you're going to be playing at 1080p with these super high frame rate competitive shooters, you're the ones that want 3600 CL16. Let me show you how you find this in PC Part Picker. So you'd scroll down here. Um, we want CL16, so we want cast latency of 16, and we want the speed to be 3600. And then we have to determine what we want for our kit. Well, remember, if you're not getting 32 gigs, you're not going to get the benefits of dual rank. There's two ways to get dual rank. Either you get four eight gigabyte sticks or you get two 16 gigabyte sticks. And again, if you're confused about what that means, watch my video on uh, best memory. It's, it was up there on the card. Check it out. I go in, into depth in the whole thing on that. Let's go look for four eight gigabyte kits or two 16 gigabyte kits. Let's we'll scroll up here to the top. Let's make sure we're sorted by price. The kits that come up, Crucial Ballistics, um, you know, just pick your color basically. That, those are great kits. G Skill Rip Jaws, another good kit. But if you want some RGB bling, you're gonna, we're gonna come down here. We're gonna pick out the uh, G Skill Triton Z. I end up getting a team group kit that is 32 gigs, but I went same thing here. I just don't see it available. I think it's out of stock right now. But so we'll substitute in the G Skills. All right, let's go through the storage. This is pretty simple. As a gamer, you don't need any fancy storage. You don't need anything, uh, you know, Samsung. 970 Evo or anything like that. You don't need a PCIe 4.0 drive. Frankly, you could get away with just a regular SATA 3 SSD and be fine as long as it has a little bit of DRAM in it. So let me show you a couple of a couple of drives that I would choose as a gamer. Um, first of all, I would recommend that you get a terabyte of space. Again, we're we're building a nice gaming system. Terabyte is is um, it's pretty much where you're going to get the best price to performance. So we want to go, oops, we definitely want an SSD here. We want 900 gigs at a minimum. And here we go. So a lot of these drives here, these are great kind of storage drive. Actually, the Team Force, uh, the Team Force Vulcan G is not a bad drive for uh, a gaming system for a boot drive. A lot of these other drives, they're fine for storage, but they don't have DRAM. They don't have a good host memory buffer process. And I'd skip out on them you're looking to spend probably about $100. Now, the Silicon Power A60 is a good one. Uh, the, this Team Force Cardera Zero Z330, great specs on it, by the way. This is actually what I ended up going with at $100 because it actually outperforms the A60. But that's really all you need. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need some super expensive storage. You don't need to spend three times as much as you actually need. Okay, the power supply. Now, remember I did a how to pick a power supply, including how to use the Linus Tech Tips PSU Cultist list for build quality. And I recommended you get something from the A, B, or C tier on there. And the better, the higher end the system and the higher power draw on, on things like the graphics card, the more you want to move up to the B and then the A tier in, in build quality. So here's how we do this. Uh, remember, this is a 389 watt system. It says PC part picker. So multiply that by 1.5 gives us about 600 watts. So that's what we're going to look for. So we're just going to go down and choose a power supply. We're going to come down here and we're going to put in. Now remember, there's there's really no difference between uh, any of the 80 plus ratings, even 80 plus white, frankly. It just comes down to marketing. You're not going to see any power differences in terms of your uh, power bill. Maybe if you own 100 systems, you would. And then we're going to put in the wattage down here, which I said 600 is, is the minimum wattage. So let's go down to the price. And then we're going to get a whole lot of units. And you're going to want to check these units against the Linus Tech Tips PSU Cultist list. I've already done that. I put a lot of these build lists together. So I've gone through and I've starred parts that I know are good or that I would pick. Uh, you can also come through here. And if you want, you can, you can get one that's uh, fully or semi-modular. I believe I got an MSI unit that was on sale. It's fully modular, highly rated unit. Um, but we could take any of these. The Cooler Master Master Watt, this would be perfectly fine for uh, $60. It's semi-modular. Semi so why don't we go ahead and pick that unit there. There we go. Let's talk about the case. Specifically for the case, what are the things you're looking for? You're looking for decent airflow, decent to good airflow. You you need fans. Um, if you don't get enough fans with the case, you're going to want to buy some. You may just want to replace the fans anyway if they're not good or if you want RGB or something and it doesn't include that. The great thing about PC Part Picker is if you put everything in first and then you go look for your case, it's got a compatibility filter right here. Now, you can always uncheck this and what happens? Oh, my gosh, look at all these new cases that we just got in here. Uh, a ton, right? We, got, we check it, they all go away because it's actually making sure that everything fits in our case. That's 
really, really phenomenal uh, aspect to this. Now, I, I always sit here and I, I just always take forever to find a case. Actually, this is a, the Sama uh, 3D for $45. My goodness. This comes with three RGB ring fans. It's an airflow mesh case. And you'd want to buy at least one fan for the rear exhaust there. Um, but it's on sale right now. This is a good case. You know, look, the build quality is average. But, hey, what do you need? It's got tempered glass. It's got three RGB ring fans. The case I ended up going with, and listen, you, there's plenty of, of, of cases that are, are like that. Uh, one that comes to mind is like the Zalman S2. It's acrylic on the side panel. It's not glass. You can scratch it. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of that. But it does come with three included fans. So if you wanted a, a turnkey solution that you don't have to worry about with somewhat decent build quality, here's the Zalman S3. The only difference is this is not mesh. It's got uh, airflow on the sides. Those are great. I went up, yeah, I went with the Eclipse P500A and I went with the RGB fans. You don't have to do that, but I wanted something that looks really cool because it's going to be my background, obviously. And you might want something that looks really cool too. So um, that's where we're going. Uh, I'm kind of excited for that build. But yeah, that's how I would think about putting together a case. And, and don't worry if it takes you a million years to decide on a case. It always takes me a million years. Here we are at the end of the build. Now, what I recommend is just going through everything, making sure it all makes sense at the end. PC Part Picker does a great job of making sure all the parts fit together. There's no incompatibilities, but still, you might as well just check it out. And you can see compatibility warning. Warning, these parts have potential issues or incompatibilities. See details below, but you click here and it just tells you some B550 uh, chips, chipsets. You have to flash the motherboard before you rise in 5,000. I don't know why it tells you that on motherboards that have BIOS flashback. I really wish it didn't because it's kind of annoying. And I think it just, for people who are new to building PCs, it's just, uh, it just scares them. This is be a good opportunity. For instance, I needed another fan here. So if, if you need another fan, you can come down here to case fans and you can select a case fan and you can pick all kinds of, you know, the size of the fan, what color the fan is, how many come in a pack, whether or not it's PWM, I recommend getting a PWM fan. And then the LED, and I ended up with getting an addressable RGB fan. I'm sitting somewhere over here. It's a Corsair fan. Um, and in the end, my build ended up being, you know, somewhere around, well, this is a 1091, but that's without the graphics card, obviously. So it's going to be around a $2,000 build, which is what I would expect your build to probably be around as well. So that's how to build the best Ryzen 5600X gaming build right now for you. What did you think? Are there parts that you would pick differently? Are there things that you would upgrade that I said aren't that important? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, remember, like the video if you got value out of it and subscribe, join us. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers as I film this right now. Check out the merch down in the description. Uh, get a cool shirt, get a cool mug. You're a PC builder, show your pride for it. With that, I'm gonna catch you on the next one.